This is Issues and Answers, a production of the National Television Network. Welcome, my name is Jesse Leons. In the next half hour or so, we're going to engage a panel on the rollout of the securely minted digital version of the Eastern Caribbean dollar coined, no pun intended, Dcash. Uh, the public rollout did commence. It's, it started on March 31st to 2021. But in order to get all of St. Lucia, well, as part of efforts to get all of St. Lucia up to speed with this development, we have joining us via Zoom, the Executive Marketing Manager at First National Bank, Mr. Robert Favrier. His is the first financial institution on island to transact with Dcash. We also have joining us via Zoom, the first merchant to transact with Dcash here in St. Lucia. He is Mr. Jimmy Francis of City Foods Rap City. And joining us via Zoom as well from the ECCB all the way in uh, Bastère is Charmin Powell. She is the Chief Risk Officer and Chairperson of ECCB's FinTech Working Group. Good afternoon, lady and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Wonderful. Good, good, afternoon. good afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful. First uh, question I want to direct to you, Ms. Powell. Uh, St. Lucia is one of four island economies that uh, participating in the initial rollout of Dcash uh, just uh, starting this past March. Uh, talk to us about uh, ECCB's rationale. Why should a consumer participate in the pilot and use Dcash, first of all? And perhaps if you could go even deeper, uh, what makes this digital currency fundamentally different to paper cash? So if we were to start off with our objectives for actually launching this Dcash pilot, we wanted to um, address the issue of financial inclusion and also the issue in terms of the payment system and efficiencies in the payment system. So for some time now, we've been um, persons in the public have been experiencing some frictions in terms of the payment system efficiency in terms of cost and the speed of payment. So sometimes we have payments taking a long time to settle. And of course, there are some costs associated with financial transactions, which have prohibited persons from enjoying the full benefits of the financial transactions offered by some financial institutions. So some of these frictions are what we try to address with the Dcash. And in terms of financial inclusion, we recognize that there's some persons out there who may not be, have a bank account and may not be able to transact, do things like wire transfer and other other um, financial transactions, such as online payments. And so we wanted to ensure that there was an avenue where all our citizens can in fact enjoy the benefits associated with digital payments. And so this Dcash um, solution is an, another option to our citizens for making payments. Now, if you were to compare it to physical cash, um, it is definitely a safer option to physical cash because whereas currently there are security issues and you walk around with a lot of cash, there's the issue of being robbed, there's the issue of, of losing your cash. So the Dcash, it cannot be stolen. It is stored on the blockchain and your digital wallet, which is in fact um, an app through your smart device through which you can access the Dcash. Um, the digital cash is stored on the blockchain, so it cannot be lost. So even if you lose your device, if you lose access to your device, you can, in fact, um, once you get access to another smart device, you can, re you can uh, regain access to your, to your, your digital cash um, compared to if you lose your physical wallet, the chance of you retrieving your physical cash that is in that wallet are slim to none. And another, another aspect of the Dcash that we try to em, um, emphasize is the whole issue of financial management. Because through the Dcash app, the, the digital app, you can actually track your expenses. So whereas in physical cash, you spend, you spend the cash and, and very often you're not aware you're, or you can't remember how your cash was spent. Um, with the, with the Dcash, you actually can track your transactions. So every transaction that is done using Dcash is stored in your transaction history. And so you can see how your money is spent, and that can help you as well in your financial management. And it can prevent overspending. Um, if I was to compare with, say, a debit card, where you just swipe and swipe and swipe, and you end up spending more than you should spend in some instances. With your Dcash, you can only spend as much as you have transferred to your Dcash wallet. So there are a number of benefits to the citizens for using Dcash. Okay, now getting into this uh, pilot launch, talk to us about the execution, what St. Lucians and the three other, uh, the four other island, three other island economies uh, can expect in this instance. 
So in terms of the pilot, what we have, we have two types of digital, digital wallets. We have the registered-based wallet and the value-based wallet. And those two options allow everybody to be part of the pilot. So every citizen can actually sign up and get a Dcash wallet, whether through a financial institution or in an agent. So for persons who have bank accounts at a participating financial institution, whether it is a commercial bank or a credit union, they can have a registered based wallet where they download the app, they fill out the online application using a code that is provided by the financial institution. And once the KYC, the Know Your Customer checks are done and the wallet is approved, they can then transfer funds from their existing account to their digital wallet, and then they can transact in Dcash. Now, for persons who don't have a bank account or whose financial institution is not participating in the pilot, what they would have to do, they can now get a value-based wallet where they download the app similarly and fill out the online application using without a code, and that would be approved by an agent. And they can then take physical cash to an agent or a merchant teller who offers that service and convert their physical cash to digital cash. Now, once that is done, there are a number of merchants that we have across all four countries and the merchant listing is increasing as we go along and they can now go and transact with any merchant that accepts Dcash. So once they will have um, signage that shows that the merchant is accepting Dcash. And so once a merchant accepts Dcash, they can use their digital cash, the Dcash, to go in and transact, whether it's to buy groceries, pay for gas, um, by medication, whatever service that merchant offers and they accept Dcash, they can now go to that merchant and use their Dcash to do their spending, similarly to how they would have done with their physical cash. Okay, so prior to the rollout on March 31st, uh, we did have a testing and St. Lucia was part of that. We had the, um, the first merchant here on island as well as first financial institution participating in this test. Tell us about that and how it went. So we, what we have is a closed pilot. So we decided to do the launch in phases. So the first phase was a closed pilot. And in that closed pilot phase, we had all the participating financial institutions, as well as select merchants and select end users and the agencies um, actually carry out Dcash transactions and go through the process of preparing themselves for the public launch. And this was very important because we wanted to make sure that when we launch publicly, you will have a good user experience. So during this period, the financial institutions were able to reacquaint, get acquainted with the app, with the, the, the Dcash app, and the process by which they have to onboard customers, onboard merchants, and making sure all the internal procedures were, were um, properly uh, ironed out any kinks, any, any um, bugs that were in the system were ironed out so that when we get to the public launch at the end of March, that they would be fully, um, they would have full understanding of the, of the system. And so it would be a seamless process. Now during this, this time as well, we had merchants on board it. And so these transactions, in, um, for example, the one at Rap City, these were to demonstrate that the Dcash actually works and how it works. So that these merchants as well were able to um, get acquainted with the process so that they can serve the public um, efficiently once we did the public rollout. So it was a matter of, you know, of gradually introducing Dcash to the market so that we can have good user experience at the public launch. Wonderful. We are speaking to Ms. Sharman Powell over in Bastia. She is the Chief Risk Officer and Chairperson of ECCB's FinTech Working Group. We have also uh, via Zoom uh, the first merchant to transact uh, with Dcash here in St. Lucia, Mr. Jimmy Francis of City Foods, Rap City, and the first financial institution on island to transact with Dcash, Mr. Uh, Robert Favre is representing Executive Marketing Manager at First National Bank. Stay with us. When we come back, we speak speak to uh, Mr. Favrier and uh, Mr. Francis of City Wrap Foods uh, on the experience in the closed pilot. Stay with us. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. 
excessive agrochemical use, additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Thank you so much for staying tuned. This is Issues and Answers, a production of NTN. We continue with our panel discussion on the rollout of the securely minted digital version of the Eastern Caribbean dollar, Dcash. Uh, we just came off of the break speaking to Ms. Powell over in Bastyr. She's the Chief Risk Officer and Chairperson of the ECCB's FinTech Working Group on, of course, the rationale, uh, what Dcash is uh, in terms of being fundamentally different from paper. Uh, cash and at this point in time while well, also speaking on the closed pilot uh, which leads me to my next engagement at this time uh, the first financial institution on Ireland to transact with Dcash within the closed pilot uh, was First National Bank an indigenous institution and uh, today we have representing the institution executive marketing manager uh, Mr. Robert Favrier a uh, good day to you Mr. Favrier once again uh, talk to us about this uh, experience uh, during the a closed pilot and the onboarding process uh, with merchants um, good good day good day to you um, this um, experience was one which was very very exciting um, for us working closely of course with guidance from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank from Miss Powell and her team what we did we engaged our staff because as you know charity begins at home so we used our staff actually to test the dcash and what we also did to encourage and to incentivize them we decided that we would give them each 105 staff members qualified for 100 dollars in their Dcash wallet so they could spend. So we had a little <laughs> bit of a competition. And so we had um, at least 50 staff members actually signed up for Dcash in the initial, in the initial phase. Um, we needed a, a minimum of, of what, less, much less than that, maybe a minimum of 10, but they got really excited about it. Um, again, a lot of them are young, um, young staff members. And as you know, this is where the world is going. I want to applaud the central bank for taking this initiative, especially in this COVID time where Dcash, as you know, is also contactless. And so with all of the social distancing and that sort of thing, it, it was very timely for us to have launched um, this, this product um, from the ECCB. So the, the staff got involved, they tested it, we also tested in terms of the support because it's one thing to use the Dcash, but of course, now you have the back office function whereby persons have to indicate their interest via, via the Dcash info at firstnationalbanksLU.com. This was the email address that, that, that we use, that we're using now actually for customers who are interested or persons who are interested in applying for Dcash. So we went through that internal process whereby they used the Dcash, where, where they were transfers as well from their account into the Dcash wallet. And we physically actually executed and went to Jimmy Francis um, City Wrap Foods to actually execute a Dcash transaction from beginning to end to ensure that the transaction was successful. It was very seamless. It was very easy. Um, I don't even know. It's, it's a three step. So it's probably, I don't know, three seconds, maybe. I mean, and, and, um, and the tagline is faster, cheaper, safer. You cannot go wrong with Dcash. And so we are, we are encouraging. We have, as a matter of fact, um, from the time we, um, ECCB launched on March 31st, we have um, been working hard to sign on at least 300. We have over 300 um, customers have applied for Dcash. So as we speak, we have our people in the back office processing those registrations. So it tells you that it is taking off. It is an exciting time. It is, it's, it is the place that the world is going really. And then even with travel, I think Ms. Powell mentioned mm -hmm. the security. You don't have to carry all of that cash around with you. If you lose your device, your money is still safe. You don't have to, to worry. 
So this is the way we are going. And as an indigenous institution, we're very proud and we thank the ECCB for allowing us and giving us the opportunity to participate in such an innovative product. Wonderful. You mentioned Jimmy Francis there. I now want to uh, head on over to him. Uh, Mr. Francis of uh, City Foods, Rap City, you were the first merchant to transact with Dcash here on island. Uh, tell us about your initial thoughts about Dcash and your thoughts thereafter when the process, the first uh, transaction was done. Uh, well, initially I, I thought it's um, futuristic. I, I thought they were taking a big leap into the future. Um, which is why I thought um, this is an opportunity um, to, to, you know, take my business um, into the future also. I, I was excited from the moment I heard about it. Um, we have had, um, you know, practice on the pilot and um, the, the whole system itself seemed to be a very um, easy to use. The process is easy. Um, it's exciting. Um, it's much safer, which is very good for both, um, you know, my business on the whole, including staff, where um, there will be less uh, cash transaction. Um, we're all excited about it. And I think customers are, you know, very much excited about it and looking forward to actually using um, the cash to pay off for their bills. Okay, wonderful. Tell us a little bit about your business. Uh, what do you uh, provide and and tell us how the Dcash plays into that in terms of the hours that you operate and so on? Sure, sure. So I own a, uh, an umbrella company called Cities Food. Under this company, I have about three other businesses. I'm um, City being the major one. Um, we are fast food business, um, which operates anywhere from, you know, 9 a.m., and um, when curfew will permit again, up to 3 a.m. in the morning. So um, having, you know, Dcash on hand makes it, as I said before, very safe. We have a wide variety of like on the, on the menu. So people purchase like from breakfast to, to, to lunch to dinner, um, as I said. And, you know, with um, Dcash um, in, the, in the later evening, we've had, you know, issues um, in the evenings. And I think... Having D cash um, cashless um, process will make it much safer for us, and we appreciate that, and we're looking forward to it taking off and you know becoming what it's supposed to be, become a cashless you know society. Wonderful, Miss Powell. I want to come back to you. Uh, aside from businesses and commercial activity, D cash is, is able to do far much more. Tell us a bit about the the options that are available in terms of being able to send money to family and friends and so on. Yes, so we have what you call peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So an individual can send money within their country or even across countries. So we have four pilot countries currently, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Kitts and Nevis. So any, any individual in one of these countries can send to the other. So I can send funds from St. Kitts, somebody in Grenada, once they have a Dcash wallet, and it's the same three seconds. Once I know their, um, their username and enter the amount, I swipe to pay, and it goes off to them. My balance is reduced immediately and they can get the funds right away as well. So um, that peer-to-peer -peer transfer is very, um, it's critical mm -hmm. because then persons, you, you may have an emergency transaction or you may want to um, actually carry out a transaction in another country. So that helps tremendously. And it's, it's a, the reduction in time for these transfers compared to other methods helps tremendously as well. Okay. Usually we have transactions being hampered by perhaps if you're using an app, you must have a minimum, minimum amount of money to be able to transfer. Um, also, uh, there have been concerns uh, in terms of transferring monies online with the high fees and so on. Speak to us about the use of the Dcash app. Uh, are there any uh, restrictions in that respect? There are no restrictions. Once you have the funds in your Dcash wallet, you can transfer. So the only restriction is that you cannot transfer more than you have. And there is there is a limit to the, the wallet. So for example, for registered based wallets, there are three tiers. And so once you are within that limit, you can transact. And similarly for the value based wallet, there are two levels um, in terms of the limit for the, the transaction. And these limits are based on your risk profile really. So the wallet limits for the registered base are set by the commercial banks or the credit union based on the customer's risk profile. And we have preset limits for the value base based on the, the, the information provided as in, um, for the, at the sign up. 
So that is the only restriction in terms of the limits. But when you're transacting, once there are funds in your Dcash wallet that can cover the transaction, the transaction can go through. Now, for the purpose of the 12-month pilot, there are no fees attached to the use of um, Dcash, neither for the financial institutions, agencies, merchants, or end users. So all Dcash transactions are free. Okay. Uh, now, someone wants to uh, get in on the action. How can they particip participate as a user or a merchant in this pilot ongoing? So I'll start as a, as a merchant. If you're a merchant and your financial institution is participating in the pilot, then you have to you just reach out to your um, financial institution, request a code, and then you do the sign up via the app to be a participant in the, in the pilot. Once your financial institution reviews the application, goes to the, the KYC, you know your customer information and review, and they approve that application, then your dig digital wallet is approved and you can now transact. So all merchants have to have an account at a participating financial institution. Okay. And the reason for this is the, the risk um, profile and the fact that the value that merchants will transact is significantly higher than an individual. So there will be need to have a relationship with a, a financial institution, a participating financial institution to be able to access the wallet. Now for individuals, there are two ways they can access the pilot. They can be part of the pilot. They can have a registered base wallet, which they would uh, access through their financial institution. So they will do the online application. They will submit it to their financial institution using a code that was provided by the financial institution. And once their wallet is approved, then they can transfer funds from their um, account and they can do that using the various um, online platform, whether it's online banking or mobile banking, and they can transfer funds from their account to their digital wallet and then begin transacting. For those persons whose um, financial institution is not in the pilot or they don't have an account, they can go and have a value-based wallet where they complete the application online similarly, and it goes to an agent. We have named agents in the four territories. The agent will approve the wallet, and then they can take physical cash and exchange it for digital cash. So they take physical cash. We have the agents or we have merchant tellers that will be identified that offer that service where they take the physical cash and they can be exchanged for digital cash. So there are two ways which the end users can be part of the, of the pilot. But, and this way, anybody can be part of the pilot. Nobody's excluded. Okay, wonderful. Mr. Favre, I want to come back to you. Uh, First National Bank stands ready to receive clients in that respect. We are very, very ready. We have received clients from um, the 31st um, since the launch. We continue to receive clients. We actually um, wrote to our clients, actually inviting them and encouraging them, telling them about Dcash. Um, the ECCB was very proactive in sending a lot of information our way. We utilize that information for our social media handles and also through our software. We have a software called Constant Contact that we reach out to all of our customers um, to give them that information, specific information. So that is why we have such high numbers registering because we did our homework during the close pilots, we did what was required because we realized that is a product that is that is worth worth in 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 investing in. And um, like um, our customer City Rab just said, um, it is cashless. It is it is very safe, especially. He um, operates wee hours of the morning, and that's a concern. Mm -hmm. We know that um, crime is on the rise, is on the increase, but at the same time, we do have to make a living. Um, we do have to provide a service in whatever sector that we are in, and we want to know that we are safe. We want to know that, that our staff are also safe, and that is what Dcash provides because it is a cashless product. And, um, and I want to put a plug for for Jimmy in that he has the best wraps on the island. So if you haven't <laughs> been there, he's located in Beauceju. As soon as you enter on the left, he didn't say that, but his wraps are very, very, very good. And that is why people are flocking there and using their Dcash at, at City Wrap, Wrap City. <laughs> Mr. Favrier, the, the role of financial institutions in this pilot is, is not just uh, to uh, facilitate 
the, the setup of, of the account, but I understand it's also to provide information. Tell us about the training of your staff in, in assisting uh, clients to use Dcash uh, because it, it's been said that it's user friendly, but should somebody have difficulty, are they on standby to assist in that respect as well? They, they are on standby. The um, email is dcashinfo Dcash info at firstnationalbanksLU.com. And First National Bank is always 1ST. Like when you come first in a race or first in an exam, it's 1ST National Bank SLU.com. And of course, we have a number of branches all around. As you know, we have just acquired RBC over the weekend. So we have two additional branches in Baywalk Mall and on Miku Street as well. So they can call in, they can come into any of our branches. The number is 455-7000. So that's an easy number to remember. 7000 is the number. And the email again is dcashinfo at firstnationalbanksLU.com. We have been doing the, the, the training, but I have to tell you, um, and I think Ms. Powell alluded to that, it is so easy. It does not require a whole heap of training. It is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a... PhD, you don't have to have a degree. <laughs> I mean, it is for the simplest, the ordinary man. Once you have a device, it's a three-step approach. It's really, really very simple. And once you get into Dcash and you sign up, you will not, you will not want to, to go back to, to hard cash. It, it is that simple. <laughs> but, so but, you but actually if they must, have a, but a, if they a digital must, can... wallet. Can you imagine we have gotten to a point where we have a digital wallet but mr I mean, favorite if, so if they must if they and must I have convert. to commend again the central bank i have to commend miss powell and her team the governor um mr timothy antoine i mean this is just amazing for this part of the world i mean in our region in the entire eccu region we can boast about having such a bold initiative mm -hmm. such an innovative initiative and i'm sure we can go anywhere and transact um um once the pilots roll out and everything goes, the other the other islands come on board. You could well imagine how how seamless because we are learning from the pilots as we go along. We are mm -hmm. learning. We are, we have taken up all of the bugs by now. Miss Powell is working very hard with her team, and I'm sure by the time the rest of the islands come on board, I mean that 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 decash will will take off in a very big way. I'm hoping that you too, Jesse. We'll sign up for your Thank Dcash. Thank you, Mr. Favre. Um, and, and, but if well. I'm able to convert Dcash to physical cash, uh, Mr. Favre, Ms. Powell, that is possible, yes? Yes, you can. That is you possible, can yes. Yes, physical. you can. Okay, yes, wonderful. You can. Cash is cash. It's just that we're giving you the cashless option for wonderful. your safety. And remember, it is faster, it is cheaper, and it is safer. Okay, wonderful. Uh, we've run out of time for this installment of Issues and Answers, but uh, Ms. Powell, I just want to offer you the final words uh, on the Dcash rollout uh, in these four islands. So I just want to um, advise as well that coming soon, by the end of this month, we'll also have the e-commerce functionality. And what that allows you to do is to use Dcash to make online payments. So any merchant that loves online payments and is using Dcash, you can then use your Dcash to make online payments as well. So you don't need a debit card or credit card. Once you have Dcash, you can also make online payments. And I want to encourage all our citizens across the ECCU, and even those where the pilot has not rolled out yet, prepare yourself to be part of this game change in this revolution in the ECCU. We have made history and we need to continue to make history together. So I encourage all persons to sign up and get Dcash or safer, faster, cheaper method of payment. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Ms. Powell. Uh, Ms. Sharman Powell there coming to us from uh, Bastere, ECCB in Bastere. She's the risk officer and chairperson of the ECCB's FinTech Working Group. Also, uh, we spoke to the first merchant here in St. Lucia to transact with Dcash, uh, Mr. Jimmy Francis of City of Foods, Rap City, and Mr. Robert Favrier, executive marketing manager at First National Bank, the first institution here on island to transact with Dcash. We'd like to thank you so much for watching. Uh, do stay tuned for more NTN programming. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. Goodbye.